Hi students in NR5021. Uh, I want to show some code about doing multiple comparisons and graphing means with standard error bars and letters of significant difference in R. And so I'm going to use the example that we've already done in class uh, that looked at different iron content levels in the Chesapeake Bay. And these were collected at different water depths. And so this code appears uh, very similar to uh, what we did um, a few weeks ago in class. And so I'm just going to run the code. This reads in the data, loads GG plot, and then produces a box plot of the different iron treatments. Or, I'm sorry, the different water depth treatments for which we measured iron. <clears throat> and so here you can see it seems to be at those lower water depths uh, that the iron content is very low. And then at the higher water depths, it seems the iron content is quite higher. And so as we step through the code, uh, we've already gone through this last time, um, but I'm going to highlight here rows uh, 12 through 17. And this basically um, first converts the water depth variable to a factor. These were stored as numbers in the data set, but we need to tell R that they're actually factors and not numbers. And then the next set runs the one-way analysis of variance. So it looks at the effect of depth on the iron levels. And so we can run that. Again, this is nothing new. We covered this a few weeks ago. Um, but what we're seeing here is that, yes, we look at this very, very small p-value in the R output, and it says that, indeed, water depth has an effect on iron content. And so that's very helpful to know, but it doesn't tell us which treatments or which water depths might be different from one another. And so that's really where multiple comparisons come in. Um, and so here, um, on lines 19 to 20, uh, we're going to be looking at which treatments are different. And this can be found on page 132 in your text. Uh, and to do that, we're going to use the pairwise.t.test function to complete this. We'll want to say between these two levels, between the iron level, uh, so this is the data frame iron and the variable iron within that data frame, and looking at um, the variable depth factor in the iron data frame, we're going to be looking at which treatments are specifically different. And we'll talk about how there are multiple comparison tests that you can do these with. Um, but for this case, we'll use the Bonferroni multiple comparison test. And so I'll highlight that and click Run. And what you see here in the output are all of the p-values comparing the different levels of water depths and whether or not they're significantly different from each other. Um, and so here we have um, as an example from 0 to 50 and 0 to 100 we have all the p-values for each of those differences. So what you can see here, so if we were to conduct these at a level of significance of 0.05 any value less than 0.05 would mean a significant difference between those two water depths. So the first one I see here is that there looks to be a significant difference between the water depth of 0 and the water depth of 40. Again, the same thing for the water depth of 0 and the water depth of 50. Um, and so I can do that, kind of look across all of this matrix and find out which treatments are significantly different from each other. I see 10 is different from 40, 10 is different from 50, uh, and so forth. So here we have these pairwise comparisons that tell us exactly which specific water depths are influencing iron content when they're compared to others. Um, another way to do that, <clears throat> looks like I have a misspelling here, we might be interested in having letters to denote significant differences. And so this is very helpful in terms of it's giving us the p-values, but something else might be telling us, um, you know, if we were to look either in a figure or in a table, it might be hard to spot those p-values. Instead, we might use something like significant differences and looking at letters to denote those. And so the Agricola package uh, has a useful function that will run. So if you don't have the Agricola package installed, uh, you can do install.packages. I've already got it on my machine, so I'm just going to call it by using library. I'll run that, and it tells me the package was built under some version of R. Uh, for my next code, I'm going to use the LSD test function that's a part of Agricola um, to look at um, 
again, there's the significant differences among all the water depths, but it will also spit out the letters denoting significant differences for each of the water depths. And so that's what this does. I want to use my iron analysis of variance that I made, and my treatment is the depth factor. And I'll put this in quotes. And again, I'm using the Bonferroni multiple comparison test here. And so I can run that. And it spits out quite a bit of output. Um, first, it tells me some basic statistics. Mean coefficient of variation, mean square of the error, the least squared difference. It tells me some of the parameters that it looked at. Um, and then it gives me the means for each of those different levels, for each of those different water depths. So here are the means, um, the standard deviations, confidence limits, minimum and maximum values. Um, this comparison, we're not comparing it against anything, so that's just null. And the really important thing here that it spits out is what it spits out in the groups. And so here we have all of our treatments, all of our different water depths in feet, and then we have the mean values. And then what we have in this column labeled M are the letters denoting significant differences. And so here, if the letters are the same, then there is not any significant difference between the two treatments. Uh, so as an example here, between 40 feet and 50 feet, there is no significant difference between those two values. The mean is 0 0.1086 for 40 feet. The mean is 0 0.1033 for 50 feet. So there's not a difference there. However, if we can compare two values with different levels or different letters, we will consider those to be different statistically. And so as an example there, um, between 100 feet and 40 feet, there are significant differences between those two water depths. Uh, the mean for 100 feet is 0 0.2096. The mean for 40 feet is 0 0.1086. Uh, so that's a big difference uh, relative to uh, the scale of our data. And so I'm going to go back to my code. And I might be interested, I already got the means, but we're familiar with what dplyr can do in summarizing data sets. So I'm going to load the dplyr package, and then I'm going to group my iron data set by that depth factor. And so that just gets everything set up to group. And then I want to summarize that data by the different groups. So I'm going to calculate just a number of observations with n.iron the mean of those observations for that group, mean.iron, and the center deviation. So I can run that code, and it didn't give me any error, so I assume that it ran fine. I also might want to calculate a standard error. So I have the standard deviation, and I have the number of observations. Well, the standard deviation divided by the square root of the number of observations is a standard error. So I can run that. And then I might just want to see what that grouped data set looks like. And here it is. Uh, so I just printed it out. Um, it has all of my different water depths. And it has the mean, the standard deviation, and the standard error uh, for each water depth. So I might be interested in creating a bar plot. How does that look? What if I plot the mean values of water depth um, and looked at the response variable as being uh, the mean iron level? And so that's what I've done here. I'm going to use genome bar to make a bar plot of it. And I need the stat equals identity um, when I do that in ggplot. And then I'll label the x and y axes. I run that. And sure enough, I get uh, water depth um, and iron content. And this is looks similar. The trends are similar to what we saw in the box plot. Uh, but these are the mean values for each water depth and whatever iron content they have. One of the things we like to do in peer-reviewed publications is to plot the standard errors as a part of our data set. And so I'm going to first calculate what those standard errors are so that I can plot them on my graph. So to do that, I'm going to make a value, a set of values called limits that's going to, that I'm going to put into my ggplot figure that makes my bar plot. And so my maximum value is going to be the mean value plus the standard error of the mean for that value. 
That'll be the upper limit of my error bar. My minimum value or my lower limit will be the mean value for the iron level minus the standard error for the iron level. And so that will, will give me my minimum and maximum values that I can plot on my bar graph. So I'll run that. And it looks like it calculated something. So now what I want to do is add the error bars and add the letters denoting significant differences to my uh, bar plot that I made on ggplot. And so everything here is the same um, that you've seen before. Um, we're still plotting the from the iron summary data set that we made from dplyr. And we now have the aesthetics are still the water depth and the mean iron content. We're going to make a bar plot of it using geome bar. Now what I do differently here, I can do plus geome error bar. What values do I want to plot? Well, what I made in limits. That was the upper and minimum values um, for the error bar. And then we'll, we'll show how this width variable, um, you can change this to set the, the width of your error bars to be something different. Still, I'm going to label the y-axis and the x-axis. And then here's where I come in to plot my letters denoting significant differences across all of those different water depths. Um, and so here, this is directly from what I'm putting in geome text here, as I say, ggplot, I want to add some text to my figure. And here's how I want to label them. And so when I look at these labels, C, 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 B, B, A, those are directly from, remember that lsd.test function that we made in um, the Agricola package. So that's exactly what's printed out here. The thing you need to be careful of here is that order matters. And so when you look at the water depth here that we see on the graph that we made, we want to order the letters according to how they appear on the graph. And so that's not always how they appear in the R output uh, from the Agricola package. And so back to my code, I do that. Uh, I'll add geom text telling ggplot I want to add some text to my bar plot. And then I will do scale y continuous. This just sets the uh, limits of the y-axis. So as we add those error bars, we actually make the plot a little bit bigger. And ggplot just doesn't recognize that. So we just need to tweak the, the scale of the y-axis to be a little bit bigger than it would normally be. And so I can try to run this. And I thought I'd notice some errors there. Um, so it looks like I have a plus at the end of that line when it's actually the end of uh, the code there. So I'll remove that. And I'm just going to tidy this up a little bit. I'm going to add the genome bar to a new line. Uh, so it knows what I want to plot. Give me a bar plot. Plot the error bars. Change the x and y axes. Add the letters of significant difference. And then change around the y axis. And so that should work now. Oh, that looks good. And I'll zoom in on that a little bit. Um, and what you can see here is it added my error bars. They're quite small for some of these lower water depths, uh, but they get to be quite a bit bigger for the larger water depths. And it's added my letters of significant difference. Uh, so CCC, this would indicate that the water depths of 0, 10, and 30 feet are not any different from each other. They have the same letter denoting the significant difference. For 40 and 50 feet, these are both the same. These both have Bs. Um, they're not significantly different from each other, but are significantly different from water depths of 30, 10, and 0, and are significantly different from a water depth of 100. And the water depth of 100 is out here all on its own. It's significantly different from everything else. Um, and then we see that by it's the only water depth with the letter A next to it. And so that's how you uh, make a bar plot with error bars and adding the letters of significant difference. Um, just to kind of look at this, I mentioned we can rescale the y-axis. Uh, if I change this from 0 0.3 to, say, 0 0.8, you can see what that does. 
that just changes the scale of the y-axis here. I can zoom in on it a little more. Well, that's a lot of white space. I probably don't want to have it as high as 0 0.8, so I'll change that back to what it was at 0 0.3. Um, in the Geome text bar, there's this uh, vertical adjustment function. Um, and this basically is how far away the letters are from your error bars. So if we change this to, say, minus 20 and run that. Well, I think it made them so big, it put them so far away that they're actually off the plot. Will I be able to see them if I zoom? Yeah, it looks like I'm able to see them. So I wouldn't want to have that in a, say, a peer-reviewed publication that looks kind of tacky. Um, and so I might just change that back to... Uh, vertical adjustment equals 2. Uh, just another thing, one of the other statements we made in the error bar statement was the width of the error bar. Uh, 0.25, this is basically the entire width um, that the error bar contains within the bar itself. And so as an example, if I change that to 0.75 and ran my code, you can see those error bars got a lot bigger, uh, almost encompassing the entire width of the entire bar. Um, and so I like kind of um, just some smaller error bars, so I'll change that to 0.25, um, and I'll run that plot again. And so that looks uh, pretty appealing to me. Um, all of my things are labeled correctly. It looks like I have an appropriate scale for everything. Um, so I'm pretty confident in making this kind of a publication-ready graph uh, that I could share in a report or uh, some kind of uh, manuscript or, or paper that I might be working on. And again, this kind of goes to show you that this is kind of the tinkering that we might do with ggplot. It's, it's fairly easy to get the data that we want on the graph, but we could do a lot more, spend a lot more time rearranging things, um, making things look pretty, different colors, making sure that things line up properly. Um, but that's it. Uh, that's how to make a bar plot with error bars and kind of linking it to what we've done uh, with analysis of variance um, and comparing the different treatments that might differ um, across a range of treatments that might be a part of your data set. So that's it.